Hi, and welcome back to another podcast with your host, Miriam Khan. Welcome to 2022. Those of you that are tuning in from a long time before, thank you very much for listening out to my show. Today's little podcast is about this interesting phase that quite a lot of us go through um, in our various relationships. It can be friendships, it can be personal, intimate relationships. And it's the stages of ghosting, distancing yourself, chasing, running. There's all these different aspects of those particular uh, phases that we all go through. And I'm going to just discuss these and focus on them as well in regards to how <clears throat> stereotypically, or in my experience as it seems, how certain genders um, approach these particular various stages and how we sort of can uh, get fixated with them, how we can sort of uh, push someone away, pull someone away, how we uh, perhaps sometimes drive someone away and sometimes how we find that someone that we want or need and unfortunately things just don't work out for various reasons, you know, um, there's various stages of that. So let's have a look at this, let's have a look at these sort of scenarios, okay? Let's get comfortable, let's get ready to discuss some topics that might, uh, you know, for some people are causing various issues like this. So you might be in a stage where you're early on in a relationship. It could be that it's somebody that you've liked. It could be somebody that you've um, really appreciated. It could be a friendship that perhaps is, you know, going into something more in depth, okay? So you've maybe realized the two of you have gone from the friend zone to potentially the relationship zone. You both like each other. You like your companionship, you like your, your friendship being more. There are feelings there between the two of you. And, you know, the two of you are perhaps trying to work out what this means, okay? And then there are other situations where it could be that it's somebody that you've met recently, uh, somebody that you've just known a short space of time, and somebody that you would love to get to know a bit better, someone that you want to spend time with. You feel like you, there's a connection there. You feel like that you have things in common. And you feel like this is someone that is worthy of your time. You know, there's certain categories that you might have in your head, in your subconscious head, that, you know, this person potentially is a good partner or a good match for me or a good relationship for me or a good companion for me. There'll be certain things that you personally are looking for in this person. And, you know, maybe you weren't expecting to have a relationship at this particular status in time, but it happens, you know, so... You're sort of ticking off those various things in your head. The ones that sometimes are unexpected are the ones that where you're not even looking for a relationship. You don't even realise um, that person has feelings for you, you know. And you don't know that you've just been getting on. This person has been a friend. You've been in the friend zone. You know, by friend zone, I mean, it's clear there's boundaries there between the two of you that nothing was going to happen romantically, you know. But... You know, as it happens, sometimes, not always, sometimes these things happen where one person has a crush on the other person and the other person sometimes doesn't know. And sometimes the person does know, they make it clear. That is where sometimes things can um, not go wrong, but they can be strained and they can be um, slightly, you know, uh, adjusted in our regards to our friendship. Things change, Okay. And they'll change for various reasons. It could be that the other person is not comfortable with this situation. They are uh, feeling very panicked. They don't want to mess up the friendship. They don't want to uh, ruin what you have, which is between you, which is a very good you know, relationship in regards to friendship. They, because they know that if they make it into a permanent relationship, it can get messed up. They will lose a good friend. Sometimes that's something that they are weighing up way more then thinking about the actual uh, other aspects of the relationship that could happen. So these things can be quite challenging for some individuals. It pushes them away. Other people might look at it and think of it as a blessing and think, you know, this is something I really want to uh, explore. It's something that I would love to spend more time with. This is someone I treasure in my life, someone I um, respect in my life. It's someone that I am loyal to, someone that I care about. So, of course, I want to spend that time with them. But what we don't do sometimes as human beings is we don't communicate that well, okay? And this is going to sound really, really rude for those of you listening in, really rude. But unfortunately, in the experiences I've had um, 
from other people that I've been helping and counselling and from personal experience in the past too, you know, it tends to be the male that does the running away, not the female. Very rare occasions the female is the one that's run away. It tends to be the male <clears throat> and it tends to be when the male has said, I have feelings for you, you know, I've got reciprocation of these feelings for you and or they've realised that, you know, they want to take that friendship to another zone, to another level. Or they're in a situation where they realise that they've got feelings. You know, <laughs> they have got feelings. And when I'm saying they've got feelings, they realise that they can't um, control what their heart feels. You know, and sometimes from some of my male friends who I've discussed this with, it makes them feel vulnerable. You know, and it makes them feel uh, weak in a sense because somebody has got this sort of power over them and they can't control it. They can't control these feelings that, you know, the heart is feeling. So in many, many ways, sometimes what they do, rather than confront the emotions and rather than, you know, explore the aspect of themselves that potentially could go into, like I said, something more than a friendship or they've gone into a zone where they've said to the other person, yeah, I like you. I mean, that is the first hurdle. That's the first step. And for many, many people, especially guys, that seems to be the hardest thing to say. And then in some cases, the guy has said the L word, dropped the L bomb, you know, and in in a lot of ways, they've dropped it maybe early. OK, they've dropped the L bomb, as we call it nowadays, very, very early. And then they've done a runner, you know, they, they've said it to the person, they've said it to the person they care about. The person's reacted, you know, whether like, wow, I feel the same way or I actually I don't or whatever the scenario is. But that person, as soon as they've realised what they've said and the penny sunk in and then they've let, allowed themselves for it to sink in a little bit more and then they've thought about it more. This is the thing that they do. They panic. They really panic. OK, and this is when they go to that stage of unfortunately stepping back and they go to the stage of you know licking some wounds I guess maybe you know you were communicating more or less quite a lot in the early days of your relationship and friendship and as soon as you've dropped that album they've sort of backed off okay now what the other individual does tends to be female it can be male too but it, it has tended to be female they go through this stage of like cat and mouse chasing each other, running from each other, okay? So what I mean by this, think about like famous um, cartoons you've got like Tom and Jerry. Sort of like that stage where one is chasing the other, okay? So one is declaring, yes, I feel the same way. Yes, I have the same feelings for you. Yes, I reciprocate this. Yes, I want it to go to the next stage. And, you know, they're starting to open up the heart chakra. They're starting to open up to their feelings. And they are uh, allowing this person into this zone that perhaps they wouldn't normally do, you know. Because opening up your heart makes you quite vulnerable, doesn't it? If you think about it, okay. Our heart is the most precious thing that we have. It's easy to break. Very easy to break, okay. And without us knowing it, we open it up to people. We open it up to strangers, to people in our lives, for love, you know, and we do like people, we do love people, but sometimes we're not in control of who our heart loves, okay, that can be the tricky thing, because it's hard to get that love back, okay, so this is part of the, the issue, when we have that person running from us, I don't mean physically running, but I, it can be like that, you know, for example, they used to call you all the time, they used to text you, they used to see you, um, they used to maybe drop things and put you first. Maybe they were doing certain work, you know, projects or they had um, certain things going on, certain other commitments, but they always put you first, you know. Um, it could be that you would ring them, at, you know, daft o'clock in the morning, three o'clock, four o'clock, whatever it was. That routine that you had that you'd established, if this is someone you've known, obviously, someone you've known for a while, you build up that rapport, you build up that relationship with them, you get to know the things that they like or dislike. It's different, obviously, when it's someone that's come into your life that's new, the patterns that you're still learning from each other. This is slightly different. Of course it is. But if this is someone you've known for a long time, 
um, when they start to back off and when they start to run away, the other individual naturally starts chasing from bombarding them with text messages, bombarding them with phone calls, bombarding them with various things that they do, maybe showing up at their workplace or, you know, if you know that person. And it's not because we're becoming this stalker or we're becoming possessed or anything like that. You know, it's not to that extreme. But we just don't understand what is going on. And without realising it, our anxiety kicks in, you know. Our alter ego kicks in. We don't like this feeling of rejection. We don't like this feeling of anxiety. We don't like not knowing what the hell is going on. We appreciate people communicating with us and telling us straight to our face, you know, having that grown up ass conversation saying, look, sorry, I don't feel the same way or this is coming on too strong or I'd rather stay in the friendship zone or whatever the, the explanation is, communicate it. And I'm sorry to say it sounds very sexist, but unfortunately it seems to be the guys not able to express themselves clearly. Instead, you sort of run and keep it quiet and expect the other person to know what this period of like, um, you know, ignoring them means. When we sometimes chase, 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 we don't realise how much anxiety we are causing in that other individual. It get, can get to the point where that person just cuts ties with us altogether because they think we're a nut job and they think that we're loco or crazy or whatever you want to call it. And in essence, all it is is that the more that they've backed off, the more we become, like I said, we're full of this anxiety and we want that as a reciprocation. We want it back to the way it was. You know, we want our friendship, our relationship, whatever it was, back to the way it was before all these um, issues came up and cropped up. What makes it worse sometimes is when that person that we are chasing then goes through that phase, phase sorry, of ghosting. So, you know, they're not even picking up your phone call. They're making it clear that they're ignoring you. They might be, um, you know, you might be sending text messages, whatever it is, to them. And, for example, if you've got, like, WhatsApp or Viber or whatever it is, you know, it's clear that that person is receiving the messages but not opening them. But you know that they've got access to other applications that they're, you know, they're live, I guess, somewhere else. Um, They might be updating a status on WhatsApp but not replying to you. And these sort of things now, because of the way social social media and social technology is now, we can easily, you know, check up on that person and it makes us more anxious, doesn't it? Because, you know, you can clearly see that they are visibly, you know, ignoring you, okay? And that's hard. That's really hard. And it's hurtful too to the other person. Sometimes we do this at protection because we just haven't got the energy to reciprocate the same thing over and over again to that person. Like, you know, you've, you've kept them in a friend zone for obvious reasons. It might be an acquaintance zone for obvious reasons, you know. It might be that person that's communicating with you. You just don't want any contact with them whatsoever because they may have already got relationships of their own and they're trying to get entangled with something that they really shouldn't be getting entangled with. All of us have some form of integrity left, right, centre, you know. So there are situations like that too where we might be ignoring somebody for that particular reason as well, you know. But more often than not, the people that we sort of distance ourselves with, it might be because we've needed that space. So, yeah, sometimes, you know, um, we, we need to back off. We need to help ourselves. We need to heal our own wounds. We need time to ourselves to clear our heads. Sometimes there's things going on in our own personal lives that we're not ready to tell other people. We're not ready to explore this with other people. That's understandable, Okay. And there are times when we have grown up things to do too, you know, like sadly people die, sadly people lose their jobs or things get hectic or, you know, there's just so much going on that we can't really look at this personal issue of ours because we put it on a back burner. That's fine. That's understandable. But please communicate that with the person that you're ghosting or the person that you're sort of backing off from. You know, don't leave things where it's deadly silent because that individual has no idea what on earth is going on, you know? And there's no harm in speaking up and telling that person face-to-face if it can be help, if it can be done that way or through a voice message or a call that this is not for me or it is for me but it's just getting a bit too much or it's not the right time right now and so on, you know? 
we all should be able to speak our piece. But when we go through that phase of ghosting, you know, like I said, ghosting is one of these things that's obviously cropped up in the urban dictionary. Definitely, I would say, in the last couple of years, you know. And it's become one of those things that people are unfortunately doing more and more because they can't um, communicate at the time what is happening to them. And like I've said, sometimes it's for various reasons where they've needed to back off, they've needed that space, they've needed the peace, um, they've needed a bit of serenity. We all get that, we understand that, you know? But what is rude or what is sometimes um, not seen as being kind is when you leave that person hanging, you know? You're leaving them hanging, thinking there's something going on between you. And especially when it's been a friend that's someone that you're very, very close to, okay? Or it could be just someone that you've met and you feel like there's a click or a connection between the two of you. And, you know, the two of you have laid down boundaries and you've laid down rules already. But, you know, feelings get in the way. Emotions get in the way. And sometimes it's not easy to explain everything you want to say. So... Unfortunately, what we do is ghost people, okay? Sometimes the more ghosting you do leads to more chasing, leads to more running, as I've said, you know? And sometimes, you know, there's there's lots of um, spiritual um, analysis about this sometimes with different connections. It depends how far you've read up on these things. Sometimes we, we believe, or some people do believe in soulmates, you know? This is someone that we feel that, is predestined for us it's someone that someone connects with us someone that we understand someone that has that relationship with us that's on the same wavelength as us but someone that encourages us and someone that that you know um helps us to grow and then there are other aspects of where we have a karmic partner um this is where you know maybe you've had some form of past life connection you've had some form of bond one of you've hit one of you has hurt the other in the past life and there is something that the two of you have to complete in this particular lifetime those types of relationships are very 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 hard very hard to move through very hard to leave very hard to come out of emotionally physically spiritually and so on you know and i know that people listening in might not necessarily understand this or believing that's fine that's totally fine you're entitled to your opinions i'm just saying these are things that I've read up on and looked into personally because I'm interested in things like this. Then there's another dynamic to that, which is the twin flame journey. And, you know, and sometimes that twin flame journey is where you meet your divine feminine or divine masculine. And, you know, this is where there's that belief that the two of you were um, one soul, you were split so that the two of you would learn different soul lessons, different types of you know, uh, masculine and feminine viewpoints, different energies, but there was something that the two of you were hopefully going to do together to empower each other, to help each other grow, to help each other uh, cleanse earth, or to come and do a particular journey on this earth to help other, other human beings, other souls. You know, there's that sort of aspect as well. Part The reason why I'm mentioning this is because part of that twin flame journey has the dynamics I'm talking about in regards to running, chasing, uh, becoming one again, understanding why we chase and understanding why we run and understanding why that intensity is there between the two of you as well, you know. I um, didn't really know much about Twin Flame Connection only, I'd say, in the last two years or so when I started to, like, look into all this aspect. And I can see where there is that intensity. It comes as a surprise. It comes as a shock. Um, you don't really understand what is going on. So in some relationships where you are totally infatuated with them, it doesn't matter what your age. I mean, you could be in your 50s, your 60s, you could be in your 40s, you could be in your 30s, and you are obsessed with this person to the point where you feel like this little teenager, you know, with these with these hormones that you can't control. And when you're in this stage of like a, a teenager, um, you know, think back to when you fell in love for the first time or liked someone for the first time, you really are not in control of your heart. Your heart's gone. <laughs> it's been stolen. That other person who has been around, you know, the person that's sort of in this situation with you has stolen it. And you find yourself in this stage where the person is ghosting you or 
you know, physically stepping back and you're chasing them, you are acting like this obsessed teenager because you don't know what else to be, you know. You are feeling all these intense, intense feelings and all you want is that person to like you back or love you back or whatever the scenario might be. And it can be heartbreaking, you know, it can be really heartbreaking when that person won't even pick up your phone call or your text. And this is someone that you're normally involved with all the time, you know. So what can we do if we're on the receiving end of those particular, you know, um, scenarios or experiences? It is not easy. It is not easy. Keep yourself busy, you know. Um, Pour that affection and that love into yourself, definitely. Work on different aspects of you that you need to work on. It could be that you want to go and do particular clubs or you want to do new, new activities or you want to work on your own soul mission. Um, you want to work, work on aspects of yourself. Go ahead and do that. You know, Don't put things on hold just for this individual to come back. Keep living your life. Maybe you are wanting to go and travel more. Maybe you're wanting to go and discover new aspects of yourself more. You may be creating more new relationships in regards to friendships within your life. Perhaps you are wanting to date other people purely so that you can experience um, being with someone else. Not to forget the person that you're, you're into, but just to allow you to take a step back, you know, and let go of that control element. Also, being by yourself, spending time by yourself, realising that, you know, not always do you need someone else there to help you be... Um, in a relationship maybe this is not the right time for you or them and that's the wake-up call that you're having as well that's the epiphany that you're having as well sometimes you know stepping back is the right thing to do because it lets the it takes the pressure off you and it takes the pressure off them and sometimes when we step back as well we sort of realize hold on a minute you know the feelings that I had were intense and they were intense because of a b c d e f g you know, sometimes I've known individuals get deeply involved with somebody like that. And it's just, it's an escapism to whatever it is that they're experiencing in their own lives. Sometimes it's not. It's a friendship of mutual trust, love, respect, kindness, um, you know, of joy. And it can be something where that friendship and that relationship has really helped us through a tough time. So, you know, we've leaned on each other for whatever reason. So there are different aspects to that, too. But mainly trying to work on yourself and trying to heal yourself, trying to enjoy your own company and enjoy the friends that do reciprocate you at that time is more important than the person that is ghosting you or not talking to you or not communicating with you for whatever reason. I'm sure that when that individual has had the headspace that they've needed and the time that they've needed, you know, they step back and they step back into your life to let you know what's gone on and it could be that they just test the water a little bit you know they're sort of like dipping their feet in to see "Mm, how's this person going to react are they going to shout at me they're going to scream at me are they going to carry on like we did before that is purely down to you and how you respond it also is down to you and your boundaries you know nobody's saying to you allow a toxic person for example to get back into your life again nobody's saying that to you at all but you know, be aware of what this person's relationship is with you. Look at the dynamics, look at the boundaries. Do they deserve that chance? You know, um, were there somebody that you were leaning on, for example, through a tough time and you needed them and they stepped out, for example? You know, it might be that they couldn't cope with it. That's fair enough. But you have to look at that relationship yourself and you have to look at what the dynamics are and whether that person deserves another chance of coming back in. You know, none of us want... A person that takes the mickey, you know, and we want someone that respects us and takes care of us and is compassionate and is respectful towards our heart and respectful towards our boundaries and respectful towards what we want in life, you know. When they've stepped out and they've ghosted us for whatever reason, you know, have they apologised or have they explained, have they said, you know, what is going on? Can we relate to that? Can we show some compassion? You know, instead of getting argumentative about it or doing the blame game. And it's very easy to do that when your emotions are attached. You know, like I said, when when the heart is attached, our heart says and does things that the other person maybe not doesn't realise that we're feeling. 
you know because you know like i said when we're feeling emotions towards someone that we've liked or that someone that we've started to fall in love with or whatever it is um we have that vulnerability about us we have that feeling of um weakness because you know that person has taken a heart and the other person will be feeling the same way and it's just that they don't know how to express that sometimes they don't know how to explain it sometimes you know and they're not used to feeling that way they're not used to feeling vulnerable they're not used to feeling attached to someone either so like i said sometimes what they will do is stand back and detach because it makes them feel safe you know it makes them not feel as vulnerable it makes them feel protected by standing back and not saying a word and don't get me wrong they'll be they'll be standing back and watching as well that's the thing nowadays with such social media people can't help um you know observe another person or you know have a look at what they're doing if if they're on certain social media platforms sometimes they don't but the thing is the main thing is that if that person does step back in your lifetime and they want to you know rekindle the friendship rekindle the relationship or just stay as friends then you have to make that decision whether that's the right thing for you to do or not you know sometimes it can be very tricky to go back to the friendship zone and sometimes you know those boundaries have been lost for a long time sometimes they can be fought back again and sometimes they can't and that's the other decision that we have to make as human beings we have to look and we have to evaluate what that friendship meant to us in the first place you know if it was someone that we highly respected we valued and we really cared about we look at that and think do I want this individual back? Can I accept them back? Can I accept the boundaries that I'm going to reinstall into this situation? Was this something that this person, for example, they have, might have been chasing me and been obsessed, but was it because of various things going on with them? You know, can I see that? Can I understand that? Can I respect that? Can I put some new boundaries in to my relationship with them to say, look, I'd appreciate it if next time you didn't do this 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 and we you know continue our friendship on this route and doing this particular situation or this particular scenario and at the end of the day like i said it requires that grown ass conversation they're not the most comfortable ones to have but they're the ones that people do respect and people do appreciate and people do um want more of you know because without it how are people going to understand what you want from them you know it's not easy none of this is easy it, i'm 43 and you're still at that stage where i'm seeing other individuals caught up in this situation sometimes myself with different friendships that you might have you know you see it with different connections of people that you know and you see the impact it has on both sides and you you know when when you see someone being ghosted or locked out or sort of like being chased or run about, it's not nice to see them in pain and it's not nice to see them in that anguish. And, you know, like I said, stepping back, um, working on yourself, working on your dreams, working on your ambitions and working with you and working with within yourself is what's important. And when that person, like I said, comes back, you make that decision of whether or not you want them in your life. But the main thing is you have that grown-up conversation with them to discuss their emotions and their feelings. And trust me when I say, and I'm sorry to sound really sexist here, but with guys, it's almost like we have to pull it out of you. You know, emotionally, some of you, not all, some of you are very good at being poker players where you hide that really, really well. You hide all your feelings really, really well. And someone might not even know that you're madly in love with them, you know, until you do the runner, <laughs> until you, until you sort of go, oh yeah, I, I, I love you this way, or I like you this way, and you're like, huh, what? It can be a bit of a wake up call, but you know, don't be scared of opening up your hearts, guys. Don't be scared of letting people know how you feel. Life is unfortunately very, very short, and yes. There are times we're going to face rejection. There are times that we, the other person does not reciprocate how we feel. And there are times when this person just wants us to be in the friend zone. But just be gentle with the person you're breaking that news to. 
Be respectful about how you do it. Be understanding of how you do that. Show compassion, show love, show guidance and show support for that person as well. You know, at the end of the day, you're playing with someone's heart and it's the most valuable tool that we have. And sometimes when hearts are broken, it doesn't matter whether you've liked someone for a short time or loved someone for whatever period of time, it takes a long time for that heart to heal, whatever stage it's in. And, you know, for us, our heart is our kryptonite. It's the most fragile thing we own and possess. So when we sometimes give part of our heart away, you know, we never get it back. And sometimes our heart is changed forever too. So be gentle when you are breaking that news to that person. And be mindful of the fact that it needs a bit of tender, loving care when you are rejecting that person or letting them go or having that grown-ass conversation, you know, and finally saying how you feel. I'm sure we're going to do more topics like this because there are people out there, you know, burying their feelings, burying their hearts, burying what they really feel and running away, you know, instead of facing what's in front of them that could be beautiful. So wherever you are in your relationship status of this scenario, I wish you all the best. I wish you strength. I wish you, I wish you joy. I wish you freedom. And I wish you happiness. I wish you happiness. Take care. Blessings. Thanks for tuning in. This has been Moon Carnet Raise Your Vibes.